If I was in a position to do so, I would make reading George Orwell's book, Animal Farm Compulsory Reading for All Zimbabwe for two reasons. 1. The book is an allegorized allusion to the betrayal of the Russian Revolution by Joseph Stalin and his acolytes. They are many parallel with the betrayal of the Zimbabwe Revolution by Mugabe et al., or be it the later is a hell a lot more chaotic. 2. By making it compulsory reading one hopes the nation will finally learn why we are in this seemingly intractable mess of our own making. I would go one step further and pay commission to sequel to the book in which the boxer, the horse, supported by the sheep try to take over the farm from the pigs, which is where we are in our political history in Zimbabwe. To those who have not read Animal Farm, Boxer took as much time to learn the five letters of the alphabet as the average animal took to learn the whole alphabet. It took him just as long to learn the next five letters, and by that time he had forgotten the first five letters. The sheep are even worse than Boxer, the only thing they mastered was slogans which they would repeat without knowing what they meant. Chemisev and his MDC Kum CCC friends are Boxer, and the Wildebeest CCC Hurt are the sheep. The people of Zimbabwe have risked life and limb to elect MDC into power for the express purpose the party would implement the democratic changes necessary to end the ZANU-PF dictatorship. After 22 years, five of which in the 2008 to 2013 new MDC has failed to implement even one token reform. Not even one dot there is evidence to suggest MDC leaders failed to implement the reforms because they are corrupt. Yes, Mugabe did bribe them with the trappings of high office, and with their snouts in the feeding trough they forgot about the reforms. Still, it would be rich to believe every one of 110 MDC MPs, 40 senators, 30 ministers and deputy ministers, two deputy PM and the PM Tsvangirai himself, were duped for five years of the new. The truth is the MDC leaders were and are to this day, not just greedy but worst of all they are breathtakingly incompetent. Like it or not MDC leaders have failed to implement even one reform, because they have never understood what the reforms are much less, how they were to be implemented. The MDC supporters, the sheep, have repeated the change. Chinja. Slogans and the party has return or change its name even after rebranding, but they too have no clue what the changes are. And so when MDC sold out during the new by failing to implement even one reform, the followers were none the wiser and so never took the leaders to task. Many people have advised MDC leaders on the folly of participating in the elections without first implementing the democratic reforms they did not listen, just as they did not listen when advised to implement reforms. And so the nation has been dragged into one meaningless elections after another, only to give ZANU-PF legitimacy. Right now Chimisit et al. are hell-bent on participating in the 2023 elections knowing fully well ZANU-PF is set to rig them and that, by participating, CCC will, once again, give ZANU-PF legitimacy. It really is a political nightmare. The CCC by elections landslide victory has put the world on notice that CCC is the next government in Zimbabwe. On this, ZANU PF is panicking and cowardly disrupting our citizens' dialogue assemblies, Chamisa posted on Twitter. The road to 2023 must be signposted by pre-election pact on reforms, prepare. It's about 60 weeks to the 2023 general election. Any dialogue must be about reforms, and the road to 2023 not anew. As Zimbabweans, we must find each other to avoid it, yet another disputed election and all its undesired consequences. 
We need a pre-elections pact on reforms, prepared. Whoever wins an undisputed mandate in 2023 must then unite the nation, a credible inclusive team Zimbabwe, and deliver prosperity and happiness. The next five years must be about nation-building transforming and developing our economy, not just politics and unseemly politicking. There will be no meaningful reforms implemented before the 2023 election, even if ZANU-PF was arm-twisted to do it. With 60 weeks to go, there is no time. Chamisa knows that. And so ZANU-PF will blatantly rig the 2023 elections just as it has done in the other elections in past. Chamisa and company know that too. Still CCC will participate in these flawed elections flawed elections because they also know that ZANU-PF will be giving away a few gravy train seats to entice the opposition to participate. ZANU-PF needs the opposition to participate to give the flawed process some modicum of credibility and legitimacy. Chamisa et al. are participating out of greed, pure and simple, they are after the few gravy train seats on offer. As the main opposition party in the 2018 elections, Chamisa felt he and his MDCA friends were entitled for more than just a few gravy train seats they had won. Nangagwa rebuffed his demands. Once beaten, twice shy. This pre-election pact is Chamisa asking Nangagwa to agree to appoint some CCC leaders into cabinet or agree to paying them as shadow ministers. Nangagwa would happily agree to this pseudo-premarital agreement was if Emisa dropped all this talk of reforms. Nangagwa created the political actors' dialogue, Polid, for the sole purpose of rewarding all the opposition presidential candidates in the 2018 and would have no problem paying a bit more to rewarding Chamisa and company. However, to get the Pollard benefits the members had to publicly endorse the elections were free and fair and Angagwa was the legitimate winner. Chamisa must endorse the elections are free and fair and thus rule out the need for reforms. The claim that this team Zimbabwe will transform and develop the country is just wishful thinking. Everyone will know that ZANU-PF will be calling the shots and, worst of all, the country will revert to its present status of a pariah state with the ZANU-PF dictatorship back in power at the end of the day. SADC proposed the 2008 Global Political Agreement forcing ZANU-PF to agree to the implementation of the democratic reforms. And so, the 2008 to 2013 new had chance of transforming the country if the reforms were implemented. The inclusive government Chamisa is calling for is nothing but a variation of the existing polit. No meaningful reforms will be implemented because Zanu PF, the principal player, insists the elections are free, fair and credible. A revolution once betrayed develops its own indult mechanism of self-perpetuating. Russia is stuck with the Stalin-style corrupt and tyrannical totalitarian dictatorship. Likewise Zimbabwe is stuck with the ZANU-PF corrupt, chaotic and tyrannical dictatorship. Chamisa and his MDCCCC friends are so corrupt and incompetent, they will never change anything. They are just ZANU-PF acolytes in all but name.